Hi, I'm Bob O'Dell, and I am here in Bethlehem. As you can see, some of the hills, some of the shepherds' fields uh, behind us here on the eastern side of Bethlehem. So today, we were in the tent here in Bethlehem, and we were looking and thinking about Paul's Midrash. And we were wondering, what does Paul have to say about the Feast of Sukkot? Because here we are, right in the middle of the seven or eight day Feast of Sukkot, mentioned in Leviticus. Well, the Sukkot is described more fully in Leviticus than any other place. So according to the Midrash of Paul, the, the uh, place that we would go to look for commentary on the Feast of Sukkot is in Romans. Now, Leviticus 23 covers all of the feasts, and, and towards the end of that a chapter uh, begins to speak about the Feast of Sukkot. Where is Leviticus 23 in Leviticus? It's most of the way through Leviticus. So we would then expect that Paul's commentary on Leviticus in the book of Romans would be most of the way through Romans, and indeed it is. So let me read some verses out of Leviticus chapter 23, and I'm going to begin just with the Feast of Sukkot, starting in verse 34. And then we're going to shift and we're going to see what Paul has to say about that in Romans. But first, Leviticus 23, verse 34. Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, on the 15th of this seventh month is the Feast of Booths, or Tabernacles, or Sukkah, for seven days to the Lord. On the first day is a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work of any kind. For seven days you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and present an offering by fire to the Lord. It is an assembly. You shall do no laborious work. These are the appointed times of the Lord, which you shall proclaim as holy convocations to, to present offerings by fire to the Lord, burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each day's matter on its own day, besides those of the Sabbaths of the Lord and besides the gifts and besides all your votive and free will offerings that you give to the Lord. On exactly the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the crops of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord for seven days with a rest on the first day and a rest on the eighth day. Now for the first day you shall take, uh, on the first day you should take for yourselves the foliage of beautiful trees, palm branches and boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Thus you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in a year. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall live in booths for seven days. All the native born in Israel shall live in booths, so that your generations may know that I had the sons of Israel live in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now that's quite a passage. That's ten full verses in Leviticus uh, that are describing the feast of Sukkot, with a little bit of flashback to the uh, uh, to the regular Sabbath, a little bit of flashback to some things mentioned in the uh, earlier in the chapter, but ten whole verses on this topic. Now we go to look at the midrash. We're going to go over to Romans, and we find this in Romans 15. Now in Romans 15, we're going to uh, narrow this down just to the verses that it seems as if Paul is commenting on the Feast of Sukkot, and. In those verses, we're only going to find four, just four. We, we read a full ten verses in Leviticus, but the commentary is going to be more brief, and we're going to find that in, ver in chapter 15 of Romans, and we're going to start in verse 10, when Paul is quoting from other passages in Scripture. He's quoting. Who is he writing to? He's writing to the church at Rome. Both Jews and non-Jews are there in that church. And he writes in this passage, he quotes and he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Rejoice. The whole idea of Sukkot. Rejoice. And then, and next verse, and again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. 
We've just heard him say, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Here we are in the land of Israel as Gentiles rejoicing with his people. And then, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples of all the world praise him. Verse 3, Paul continues to the Romans. Again, Isaiah says, there shall come the root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles hope. The root of Jesse. We're here in Bethlehem. We happen to be celebrating Sukkot today in the town of Bethlehem where Jesse is from. The root of Jesse, David, but also the root of Jesse and David is Messiah, Yeshua, who shall arise to rule over the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. Now many people have questioned when Jesus was born. Many people, although, are looking to this time of Sukkot as the most likely period for when uh, Jesus was actually born in this city of Bethlehem. So isn't it inter interesting that Paul, when he does his commentary on Sukkot, he happens to pull out that verse about uh, the root of Jesse shall come and arise, making a reference all the way back to Bethlehem and Messiah. But we've got one more verse to go because we said there were four verses that were providing commentary to this passage in Sukkot. And the last one, verse 13 of chapter 15 in Romans says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all, what? Joy and peace in believing. That's what this, the Feast of Sukkot is about joy. We are commanded to be joyful. So may the God of hope fill you and me with all joy and peace in believing so that you and me, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What might Paul be saying to us in this verse? Perhaps it is this, that when we're in the seven days, this eight days of the feast, we're commanded to be joyful but for what purpose? In what way do we leave those seven or eight days as we go back to our homes? Could it be that Paul is saying that, may, that he's asking that may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace? Why? So that we will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope, taking hope from this place to the nations, taking it back home, taking it to the world taking it those to those who are looking for the hope and of course from where does our hope come it comes from our Messiah from Yeshua thank you for your attention and may you also abound in hope in Yeshua's name amen